same language, wear the same clothes, or even have the same religion. But there may be ways in which you understand each other very well and have the same values. Like most kids, international high school students worry about what to wear on the first day of school and where to sit in the cafeteria and how to talk to someone they have a crush on. They also worry about getting good grades and getting into college. Nuru, the girl from Guinea, dreams of being a doctor. Her classmate, Daniel Corridan, a rising senior originally from the Dominican Republic, wants to be a professional baseball player like his idol, Derek Jeter. My dream since I was 11 years is to sign with the Yankees, says Daniel, who moved to New York when he was 10. Finally, Lopsang is determined to become a film director. His favorite movie? Forrest Gump, says Lobsang, who recently graduated high school and plans to study theater at college in the fall. I love the story. It's not just one story, there's many different stories. The same could be said about the high school. It's amazing how many different stories are inside of one school. Around 415, in fact. The International High School at Prospect Heights in Brooklyn is one of many schools of its kind popping up around the nation, from Bowling Green, Kentucky, to San Francisco, California. Many are under the umbrella of the International's Network of Public Schools, which oversees 27 schools and academies with more than 9,000 students. In New York City alone, there are around 15 of these schools, serving newcomers who are learning English. At last count, the New York schools combined had students representing nearly 120 countries and more than 90 different languages. New York City is very diverse. So you analyze text elements, annotate, highlight the phrase in paragraph 16 that has a footnote. So here, under the umbrella, this phrase has a footnote here, number one, footnote. And down, we can see meaning of it under the umbrella, which means part of a large organization. Now let's infer what does the footnote help you understand about the International High School at Prospect Heights. So the footnote explains the phrase means part of a large organization and helps readers understand the International High School is a part of a network of similar schools. New York City is very diverse. Any public high school is likely to have some newcomers, so some people wonder why there is a high school just for immigrants learning English in the first place. Wouldn't they be better off mixing with other students born here? But one idea behind these international schools and academies is that English language learners, ELLs, benefit from incorporating their native cultures and languages into the classroom. So if we talk about here, uh, any public school is likely to have some newcomers who jo So those students can join any of the public school. So the question here is, why is there a need of special school, special national schools for students, immigrant students, we can say. So here, the idea of international school is that schools and academics can be taught much better for the students for whom English is not the second language. So ELLs here could benefit from incorporating their native cultures and languages into the classroom. Paragraph 18. Biculturalism is something that we celebrate because when our students arrive in this country, they immediately begin a process of developing a new identity, says the principal, Nada de Castro. They bring all of the richness of their languages and culture from their own countries, and then, as soon as they arrive, they begin to develop an identity that includes the new experiences they have in the United States. So here they, Part uh, they three. talk about uh, they bring all of the, uh, biculturalism. Here, biculturalism means when the students from different culture come and combine their culture with the 
culture of the United States, they begin mixing their culture and adapting at the same time. So it is kind of by culture, culturalism. A global perspective. So paragraph 19, uh, coming to a new place, it changes you, she added, but it does not mean that you learn everything beyond, behind or erase your past. So it's like when you go to a new place, you don't change your own self, but what you do, you add extra or you learn new things. It's not like you erase your past, but it's like developing your past. Here, part three. Part 3. A Global Perspective In the classroom, students frequently work in small groups, along with students who speak other languages. Sometimes, students are paired together with friends from their home country who speak the same native language and are able to translate words and ideas into English. All of the students mingle with classmates from a range of other countries throughout the day. Whether they're learning math, playing basketball in the gym, eating lunch in the cafeteria, or attending a meeting of one of the many after-school clubs. I was in chess club, photography club, magazine club, dance club, and fashion club, says Lob Singh. I was a male model. In the process, they learn English in addition to picking up bits and pieces of other languages and cultures. This is your part three, a global perspective. Here for paragraph 20, it begins as in giving information about the classrooms in which students work together in small groups and they speak the languages apart from English. Sometimes students are paired together with friends so that they feel easy and they could uh, translate words and ideas in English as those gr groups consist of the uh, students from the similar country. So uh, all of these students will or the groups will mingle with other with other classmates for a range of other countries throughout the day, whether they are learning math, playing game, or whatsoever, sitting in the cafeteria, um, attending meeting, class, clubs, whatever. So this process, they are need to learn English. In addition to picking up bits and pieces of the other language as the culture. Paragraph 21. Our belief is that language and content cannot be separated, and therefore you have to teach them together, says Luft. There's a myth that students can't learn meaningful content until they learn English, and we think that's not true. Teenage immigrants know a lot about life and academics from their home country. We should think about ways to capitalize on that. This approach shows positive results. According to a recent study, Looking at English language learners over four years in New York City, international high school students graduate at a higher percentage than ELL students at other schools in the area, 74%, compared to approximately 31%. You want students to use this approach shows positive. Now let's analyze the text element annotate in paragraph 22, highlight information that is also represented by the bar graph. So here is the information, uh, paragraph 22, which has information. Uh, this approach shows that the positive result, according to a recent study looking at English language learners over four years in New York City, international, international high school students graduate at a high percentage than ELL students at other schools in the area, 74% Compared to approximately 31% here, we have some information which was also shown in the bar. Now let's analyze what does uh, showing this information graphically help the author to emphasize, explain. So the number of ELL students who graduated in New York City school in 2006. So similarly, I would have uh, thought that the ELL would have a uh, below average graduation rate simply because of the challenge of uh, learning English. This graph shows that uh, with effective support, they graduate at a slightly above average rate compared to the general student's population. Paragraph 23. You want students to use all of the tools they have. 
That's part of what education should teach you, how to use every tool and source at your disposal, Luft says. Think of a carpenter trying to bang in a nail, he adds. You wouldn't tell a carpenter to build something and take the hammer away and say, okay, do the job without your most important tool. So the whole idea of telling a student, don't use your language, or that it's not important, it's how they think, and it's often a part of how they express their emotions. It's an integral part of who they are as a person. You should always try to capitalize on all aspects of who you are as a person and extend that into learning. So here, there's a big question. Notice a note. One question you should ask yourself when reading a non-fiction text is, what challenge changed or confirmed what I already knew? Highlight any details in the bar graph that help you answer this question. So here is the bar graph. Uh, on this scale, we have EL students in New York City, which is 31 person. EL students at International New York for Public School in New York City, 74 person. All students in New York City School, 72.6 person. So we need to highlight uh, International Network for Public Schools. Let's summarize. How does the information in the graph connect with what you already knew or believed to be true about the graduation rates? So here, this information, the English language learners who attend international international network schools in New York City graduate at high, much higher rates than do English language learners who attend other New York City public high school. Paragraph 24. For some students, their native language is their identity. Take Lob Singh, for example. His family left Tibet because they weren't allowed to live freely there under Chinese rule. Before coming to the U.S., he says, we had to immigrate to Nepal to live the way we want. In America, Lop Sang and his family are free to speak their language and honor their culture in a variety of ways. Right now, I live in Queens, so I think of myself as an American New Yorker, says Lop Sang who embraces his Tibetan identity at the same time. We still practice celebrations, like the Tibetan New Year, he says. Nuru, from Guinea, honors her culture by attending West African weddings in the city. She also celebrates religious holidays, such as Eid al-Fitr, which marks the end of Ramadan, when Muslims fast for a month. It's important to honor her culture here, she says, partly because unrest in her country has made her nervous about returning. I can't remember a lot from there. This paragraph uh, tells about, how, for some students, how the native language and the culture is their identity. The paragraph 25. Another way students connect to their home countries is through food. The International High School at Prospect Heights sometimes hosts food festivals, where students are invited to bring dishes that reflect their culture. Daniel, from the Dominican Republic, brings mangu. It's like green plantain. You mash it and then put on some salami, egg, onions, and cheese, he says. It's delicious. So paragraph 20, uh, 25 is about in the way how students feel connected to their country, and that is through food. When they when the school hosts a food festival, uh, the students bring their own food from the culture and they be so excited for sharing their food. Paragraph 26. Meanwhile, Lobsang and many of the other Tibetan students enjoy momo, a kind of Tibetan dumpling. In Queens, there's a lot of Tibetan restaurants, and we also cook Tibetan food, he says. Even though the pizza and the burger taste delicious, we still eat traditional food to keep the tradition alive. Now that he has graduated, Lop Sang is looking forward to college and his dream of becoming a filmmaker. But he also took some time to look back at the past four years and all that he accomplished and experienced at the International High School. I made a lot of friends from different countries. Yemen, Mexico, Pakistan. I have African friends. 
Lobsang says. It's kind of like a family. A family with different races. When he was still a student at the school, he says, some of his friends from the neighborhood who grew up here would laugh. If you are in a school with people from different, they called it immigrant high school, he says, but they don't know how helpful the school is. If you are in a school with people from different countries, they share their problems, and it gives you more information to understand the world better, he continues. If everyone is from same country, and go to same school, then they don't have a lot of stories to share. Here, there are a lot of interesting stories. So here, paragraph 26, Lopsang, and many of the other evidence school, uh, students enjoy eating momo, and there is some information about how they eat the tradition food to keep the tradition alive. And now, he's graduated. Lapsang is looking forward uh, to college and his dream of becoming filmmaker, but he also look uh, but he also took some uh, time to look back to the past four years. He studied in that school and all he accomplished and experienced being in the international high school. He felt like a family being in international high school. A family with different races and he was able to make a different uh, friends from different countries and he says when he was still a, a student in the school some of his friends from neighborhood uh, who grew up they would laugh at him that he's studying in an international school so and they also called it immigrant high school instead of international high school and he says that, but they don't know how helpful the school is. As if you are in a school with the people from different countries, they share their problems and you get to know um, different people, you get information, you can understand things better. And in short, you can understand the world in a better way. He continues. And he says, if uh, everyone is from same country and go to the same, same school, then they don't have a lot of stories to share. And as he's, he studied in an, in an uh, international high school, there are a lot of interesting stories which he got to know. So here is the end of the story. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Good luck.